Well, here we are yet again with another beautiful classic full build restoration. Um, you may have seen this video where basically um, it came in scratched to hell. Um, I had to fix the frame because all the rivet nuts on the bottle cages was basically all chewed up, gone. Looked like someone had basically just gone hardcore with some bolts. It's back from pain. What do you think of this? Well, you might you might see it anyway because it's obviously thumbnail. But look, so we've got the Kona Killer Weyer. Um, as you can see, it's just been stickered. So usually, I don't kind of show a frame when it's kind of like this. It's still it's still got to have kind of all the kind of like stickers and tape peeled off and done. So that's the first job, first job. Get the frame, get all the stickers finished um, and then start basically building it. So if you're gonna stick around to watch this video, I've got a massive tub of parts behind me with some andor bars and loads of cool stuff in there. Um, yeah, got the wheels down there. Stick around, if you get to the end, let me know what you think of the bike. You know, it's not, the original paint that came on the bike but i think this is just gonna pop we're just bringing like bikes back to life you know so let's get on with the video let's start taking off all this tape let's get at least the clamp on the seat post in so i can get it in the stand correctly start just building this this is gonna this is gonna be beautiful this is if you watch the last video i think this one's gonna be even nicer Let's find out. Let's get to it. Well, <clears throat> with all the rest of the stickers now all firmly stuck down and the rest of the bits all taken off, you can see she looks absolutely stunning. Now there's a few bits I want to get on um, before I can really start building this bike. So first off, one being with the Kona Killer Wayers, they have this awesome kind of like little mount that's uh, been polished up and that basically sits around there and that basically is for your cantilever so that will nicely slide that over not really going to tighten that up yet but the reason i'm putting that on now is one it goes straight over two when i get this on i don't really want to be taking this off and on um on the actual bike so i don't want to put that on then i have to take it off again to put that on and then put that back on because I want to kind of minimalize the kind of paint kind of damage, so to speak, on there. So this should also just slide over nicely, like so. Make sure that's all lined up. Now, with this frame, I am going to do a little bit of invisi framing and uh, some oil waxing as well, just to preserve it even longer for the future but I need to put the seat post in. So I've just popped a little tiny bit of copper slip in there, which means I should be able to put the post nicely down. So there you go, that'll be enough. All we want to do is just enough so I can make sure that's secure and I can put it in the bike stand and then I can move it around safely do all kind of like the bits of invisi frame and stuff that I'm going to do and wax oil it so that's in that's on right I'm going to do all the frame prep I'm going to tap all the threads put the bits of invisi frame on Wax all the inside. I've done all of them on other videos, so you don't need to see it again. So next, after I've done that, which will be in a couple of seconds for you guys, we'll jump on to fitting the headset and building. So let's fast forward to that. Well, I at least want to get the headset in before I go in for my tea. I've been looking forward to my tea tonight. Having uh, chicken burgers and chips, if you wanted to know so headset for this is 
keeping it retro old school we've actually got the original forks that came on this frame also came with the original Kona Impact headset so mint condition we have got fresh new bearings for the headset so awesome so we will of course get the cups in um done majority of the invisi frame and um, there's a few bits i can't do just quite yet um like the back of the seat tube i always like to put a strip down there but i like to make sure i get the front mech in on first then obviously the height set so Let's get the cups in. <laughs> Tell you bloody what. I love retro bikes. Oh, I love you retro bikes. You're so much better than new ones. Alright, make sure that's all lined up. Beautiful. You always have to make sure you've got a good grip of this this tool. Alright, top cup. Just a top cup, and then we can put the forks on. After I've greased all the bearings up. Yeah, that's all pressed down lovely. Uh, let's get let's get the forks and headset on. Well, I've had my tea. It was lovely, chicken burger and chips, proper English, no special, it was amazing. Now, it took longer than I was expecting, and it's getting quite dark outside, so I at least want to get the forks and the impact headset on and tightened up um, this evening, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wake up nice and early, crack on, so let's get that done. So I've greased the bearings in the top and I've greased the bearings in the bottom and that's all I'm ready to go. The bearing cage and that is a lot bigger on the bottom on the impact headsets rather than the top ones, the bearings are a little bit smaller. So, But because these are the right forks and the colour matched, painted with all new decals on there as well, looking absolutely awesome. Again. That's been painted, no need to put any grease on there. A little bit of copper slip on the threads just to stop kind of rusting and so on as well. And then, da -da 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 -da, there's the rest of the impact headset. So we'll get this on. Boop. And then, let's get this on perfect. Oh, that's feeling nice. So a bit like bottom brackets, you shouldn't have to force that on and it should just slip in nice and nice and easy. So nip that up. So I'll just put, tighten that just a little bit. I'm not gonna tighten it too much right now because I always like to do final adjustments on the floor. And then let's wipe off the rest of that grease and so on and all that head set cut around the top one oh yeah well That's going to look amazing. Right, I'm going in. I'm going to get some gym jams on and I'm going to relax for the evening. 
but you'll see me tomorrow in a minute. Well, in a second. So, see you in the morning, but I'll see you in a minute. Good morning, everybody. All right, so let's crack on with this build. We had the actual stem all repainted, redecaled up and done as well, looking fresh, factory finish. Lovely lined up. Let's get this in. Ooh, boink. I think if you're building this bike, you've got to have a velocity stem. We didn't want the stem to be red to match the rest of the bike. So we wanted kind of like black cockpit, so to speak. So, which will come more clear when you get to the handlebars in a second. So we'll get this lined up, get this tight. Well, getting nipped up anyway. And then there's a few other bits I need to do on the bike before we're really going in deep. So let's get to that bit now, down at the bottom of the bike. So the one thing I didn't do is tap that. Forgot about that one. So you can see there, it's quite a big build up of paint just on the first couple of threads there. Now we did have something screwed in there when it got painted, so we need to tap that out. So we need a tap. I'm gonna pop just a bit of um, cutting fluid. And all I use for that is the park tool cutting fluid stuff. Now, I could go through the front, if it focuses. So I could go through the front, but the easier way for this is because the back's quite clear. So I can actually pick up and feel the threads relatively nice from the rear. And then what we'll do, so we'll tap this through and hopefully it should clean it all up really nicely. There we are. Nice and clean. Woo, it's a bit windy today out there. Damn. Oh, right, let's get the headset in. Headset. Let's get the bottom bracket in. Because, why not? What I'm going to do is, bomb brackets in, I'm going to put the other side in. Now I'm going to just loosely put the crank on, just so I can set the height of the front mech. And then, because once the front mech's set, I can then do the invisi frame bit just down there. So, I'll get the non-drive side cup in, and then put the front mech on. And go from there. So... <clears throat> On this bike, we're actually going to be running Dior DX. I might actually have to put the other light on in the workshop because it's getting quite dark. It's not getting late, it's just the weather's not great today in the UK and it's dull and grey. I've dropped my Allen key. Well, after tapping that frame, that went in super lovely. All right, let's see where we're at. So this is where we at. Stem on, forks, headset on. I've loosely put in, I haven't tightened them in yet because we're putting a bottle cage on there. Um, bolts are in there, we're not putting a bottle cage there. Bottom brackets in, non-side drive crank arm is on. The front mech is set to where it needs to be. I haven't put that on yet because I haven't decided on the chainstay protection for the drive side. Um, we have got, for the crank, 
Du, 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 du. The Shimano Dior MT60 with the Biopace chain rings. Very nice, very nice. So that's what we're going to run in terms of that. Um, just on the Invisiframe, down the back of the seat tube, which is that invisible you can't see. And also just down at the bottom of the mech there. And then we are running the Dior DX mechs. Front and rear, very nice condition. And then I've just popped in a few little bolts just to uh, plug some holes. Um, so that's where we're at so far. So let's get on. Oh, we need to discuss the handlebars. We'll do the handlebars next. What we've got for this is, I can open it, three triple T bars. Now, if I can open it. That's never good at form wrapping presents. Right. Three triple T bars, but they are the pure black ones, no branding. Now, there's something special. There's something special with these. Well, there will be. We have got something in there for them later on. Near to the end, once we've got everything on the cockpit then we'll do that but it's one of the last jobs because the bike needs to be down on the floor set level right so i'm going to pop the bars in and uh kind of go from there um so do, 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 do. what i will use what i tend to put in these is a couple of things one stop rusting to it just makes it better is it's actually like fiber grip usually used for like carbon and stuff like that but i find even on the older retro bikes they're good because one grips handlebars gives it just that little bit of lube so because obviously these are steel stems so it also adds just that little barrier of summer to stop kind of rusting and so on as well. So we'll slide these bad boys in. Get them nipped up into place. And what I will do is I will measure to make sure that they're equal because because there's no specific branding, there's only very faint lines on this. I want to make sure that they're the same length on both sides. So I think we did the right thing in blacking out the cockpit. Just breaks up the bike just that little bit better. Um, so yeah, I'll measure these and I'll see you in a minute. I want to get it on next, <clears throat> the brake levers. What I've got is, I love stuff that comes in boxes for some reason, I, I don't know why, um, but when I see a nice retro box, I just, I just look at it and go, mmm, lovely. All right, so, I'll pop this open Loads of goodies inside. So if I just pull one of these out, well, I'll pull two out. So it comes with all kind of like, all the bits and all the kit. So we're gonna use the bolts out of there. We won't use the uh, brake hangers because we've got a different something we're using for that. So we'll pop one of these out. These are the really good ones. I like these because 
because oh they just I like the finish on them but these are the good ones because you can set the tension by the kind of like the nut thing at the back we'll call it a nut thing um already greased the uh, mounts so once we get these on they basically just slide over but on the inside i'm sure these have let's have a look uh, yeah so these have like a little kind of shim that sits through the actual brake kind of into there and then the spring sits into that bolt there so you don't actually use the holes on any of the mounts you just have to line everything up bolt it on and then you set the tension and then tighten up the bolt and then that is on so really easy to set up these ones are because you don't have to worry about obviously the tension because sometimes with canters the tension springs are quite rubbish but you do have to get the springs in the right place um quite written down somewhere but there's a there's a silver on one side gold on the other i always forget hence why i write it down um so we'll get these on front and rear getting them all bolted up and then i think we will kind of get all the parts on the handlebars some nice bits um and we will get on the grips which we have now called the dildo grips we've renamed them so you'll have to see what we mean about dildo grips in a minute so i get these bolted all on front and back and we can go from there well let's see what we are putting on the underbars we are putting on da -da 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 Shimano Dior thumb shifters because they will just make the bike look so much more retro. Cameras all over the place, and that's what you kind of want to be running with these gears as well. So we we'll slide them down just a little bit when the camera settles. And then in terms of brakes, we are running the Diacom S7 levers. So matching the die comp with the die comp um, cantilever brake arms. So we'll slide them on. Camera's all over the place again. Camera's drunk. So we'll slide them down nicely. And then when that settles again, I'll show you what I'm talking about the grips. So we're going to use the attack grips, AKA the dildo grips. That's where we're going to go with this one. So I'll get them on shortly. Yeah, nice and retro. So it's now at this stage where I need to make sure the top tube's covered because once I get these on and generally set, there's a slight chance that the handlebars might turn and donk with the levers into that. So we generally don't want that. So we're just going to generally get these set up in a generic spot. We'll get the uh, grips on as well. <laughs> oh, and just to add as well, after the, that last awful camera angle is over Christmas, well, say Christmas, over having some spare time what i'm actually going to build is i'm building some kind of like rails and stuff on the ceiling um to obviously attach my camera to so i can get better recording angles and all the rest of it so that will happen at some point
Right, so you've seen me do this before. <coughs> and what I've done is a full wrap down the um, drive side chainstay, just so it protects everything from oil um, and everything, all the crap that gets in and around there. Um, and what we're gonna do is, we've got a new old stock shark fin that's gonna go on. So, I'm not going to strap that on yet because I want to set that when the wheel's in. Um, just popped a little bit of copper slip just on the axle. And now we will put the crank on. And that is starting to come together. So let's get this all bolted up. So we get that bolted up, um, let's talk about wheels. Well, in terms of wheels, we're gonna use a set of nice Mavic rims and Dior DX hubs. So the hubs are no old stock. I think the rims was at the time as well. I built these a while back. Um, kind of just been waiting for a bike so um something different on this one we're actually using we you know we love darts and smokes on this channel absolutely love the majority of the bikes usually get tan walls this one however is getting the full black darts and smokes on there so let's get the wheels on Do, 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 do. Where is it gone? Right, so before we get on to some of uh, the other bits, like getting the chain on and cabling and oh, some fancy bits in a minute, um, I'm going to put on a few things. First of all, I'm going to show you these. These are amazing. Um, so pedal-wise, we've got a super, super clean set of Shimano Dior DX pedals. And usually they're like absolutely battered but they are looking absolutely sweet so we'll get them on as well i've copper slipped both threads in the crank and on the pedal so i'll just generically just pop these on and also as always another thing you've probably noticed on this channel as well we also like wolf tooth um bottle cages so we're going to pop one of them on as well and then once that is on we'll then put on there we go god that took a bit of time didn't it that one couldn't find the thread all right so then yeah we'll put we'll put on the cage um and then we'll stick on the shark fin now when the shark fin's on, get the chain on. God, can you hear the wind out there? Woo! Crazy. Well, it is for the UK anyway. Like, we don't have like hurricanes and stuff like that out here, but... God, this British just moan about the weather really, don't we? Oh, it's too cold. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too windy. Oh, it's... Where's the snow? Oh, snow comes. Oh no, can't leave the house because we've got like a centimetre of snow on the ground. Yep, yeah, there you go. I'm not going to leave it loose. Um, the shark fin was actually no odd stock. Um, actually got the uh, packaging and stuff with it. So we'll, we'll, we'll bob that on so let's tighten up all these bits
So it's chain time. All right, we'll get the chain on, going for KMC. Oh, it's shiny. Get the chain on and then it's cables and it's all starting to come together, looking beautiful. And then it's another retro bike saved and looking absolutely amazing. So, we'll go and measure all this up. Right, so that's now cut, so now can loopy through the chain wheels. Here we are. <coughs> and then Boink, 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 and boink. All right, let me just slightly adjust that. Let's have a look and go from there. So I'm still persevering with the brake, so kind of just kind of did a bit of cabling up there, but I wanted to show you this. So what I'm going to do just there, so on the vo velocity stem, it kind of comes around, stops there, then goes over that. But that's nicely been painted, so I don't really want the stainless steel cable running on there. So what I've used is like a little straw that will go up and over. And basically protect so for the hanger for the brakes we are using da -da 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 -da, got some more chill pills these ones are the silver and with red writing so the box is a bit cracked but they're gonna look super sweet so let's get some of them on so, do -do 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 right so that's going around there Oh, that feels silky smooth. Right, let's get a chill pill out. So, whoop. However, you do have to put the little grub screw in yourself, which ain't a massive fiddle. It's not a massive faff. Just screws in a little bit like that. And then under and then it's just a case of setting it so let's put that in a generic place because I might have to pull it down adjust it so we'll set that there for now yeah that's not looking too bad Also, we are going to use as well some fresh straddle cables. So we'll get these generically in. And I've done it. I've I've said it loads on my other videos about how I set up um, cantilever brakes, and they always work, and they meet the rim, bang bang, perfect every time. So. Get this one clipped in. Make sure that it's not twisted. There we are. That's a five. So where's my little five gone? There it is. So I'm just going to do a basic generic, get everything kind of lined up 
where I want it to be before I go in and properly start setting everything. Because like I say, these brakes are super cool because you can actually set the tension so you can actually get that brake like really, really good as well. So, but other than that, it's literally brakes. Oh, I'm that excited. I'll, I'll flash through the brakes. I'll show you the brakes in gears once I've set them all up and then we'll get to that because that's I've been excited for that the most for this bike. Let's go with that. Oh, she's nearly done. Ah, let's get a seat on. Oh no. Oh, seat and then that thing on there. Let's do it. Well, it's nearly finished, so it's time to get the seat on. Um, we're going for obviously Sally Italia flight. All right, let's get this off. Probably would say, out of all the people I know, and all the bikes I've done, and all the things like that, including myself, I'll probably say there's a few, a minor few, that are generally keeping flighting business and panoracer in business. Oh, it's a six mil. Oh. There we go. Oh, she's nearly done. I'd say she's one of my favourites. I'd definitely say she's one of my favourites. The sky today is a bit grey. I'll show you the sky. All day it's been like this. Let's have a look. Told you. This guy's been like this all day. A blue cloud in, in this, well, not a blue sky in the, in the clouds, I guess. It's quite windy. It's died down a little bit now. I've got a massive tree over there. And at night, that's where all the bats kind of come out of. And then in the daytime, birds and stuff are in there. So. Yeah, that's the weather right now. So, I really need to concentrate for this. So I'm just going to give the handlebars, both sides, just a little alcohol clean. Just because I don't want no oil or anything like that on there. And then, and then what we've got is, I'll try and hold this without it dropping out. They've gone. They've, oh no, no, they're not gone. <laughs> they're gone. Right. Basically, some Kona stickers for the bars. Now, they're very close together. So I'm going to have to trim down the middle and then we want kind of these lined up probably with, our, with probably a perfect gap either side. So 
I need to go and clean my hands. Let me go and clean my hands and then we'll put these on and then that's done. All right, let me go and scrub these. Now I reckon I can fit it using my Invisiframe. Oh, don't look at all the mess down there. That's uh, loads of mess that needs tidying up. Oh, and I've got um, the next bike up there as well. So I think, first of all, to get this off. Like that. I can pretty much give that a bit of a squirt. Give the bars a quick squirt. Pretty much line this up. I'm going to go so they're nice and equal either side. Oh, lovely. And I reckon, where's my squidgy? If I squidgy this off, the same as I do my InvisiFrame stuff. Making sure it's lined up. And I should be able to get it stuck. So this is what I've just spent the last couple of minutes doing. Putting some Kona stickers on the bars. That is retro. No, I'm really happy with that. I really enjoyed building the Kona Kilauea. Now you've got to remember, it came from this video. I fixed a lot. I it, it's been away for pain, decals, you name it. So this has been like a grand up build. This is like factory finish. Everything's polished, min, new, pretty much everything. Well, no old stock, most of it. Um, let me know down in the comments what you think. I think the colour, compared to what it was, to what it is now, is absolutely popping. So, yeah, let me know what you think. And I've got loads of tidying to do. There's a big pile of rubbish down there as well. So I've got loads and loads of rubbish to do. Um, and loads of future bikes. So it's becoming a bit of a thing now where you're getting a full bike build probably every weekend. Saturday, Sunday time. Um, I'm kind of thinking of something midweek. So many bikes and projects. I've got one sat right there in front of me. That one can't be done in one video, but I'm thinking that one can be done over a couple of videos. So let me know if you find the current format or you want me to go more in depth with stuff or you want the videos a bit shorter, but you want the same amount of fitting and stuff. I don't know. I've kind of been going with the flow since this thing started. Um, you guys that comment, subscribe, like the videos are just absolutely awesome anyway. Like, you guys just make it so much worthwhile. And I'm not talking about monetary value. I'm just talking about just people appreciating the retro older bikes and just getting your hands dirty and getting stuck in with stuff. So, hey, on that note, Let's go and have a look at the bike outside before it starts raining because it's going to. And I'll see you probably midweek. 